Let's get it, let's get it. Ooh, why not? Why not get a little habanieri? No more smell. Slam, baby. And you know what the crazy thing is? They actually made this with baijiu, but they hit it very well. This is the freshest Hong Kong iced lemon tea or dongling sha that I've I've ever had. I'm going for the door yaki. The door yaki, guys. Woo! We made it to volume 20, and that is over 300 restaurants, and we're still going. Of course, no better place blends commerce, cooking, community, and tourism than Chinatown. So let us put you onto a great chicken pho spot that is gonna be a new classic, an all-you-can-eat hot pot and BBQ that could not possibly be any cheaper, and one of the top dollar dumpling spots open a new location, an elite lemon tea chain from Hong Kong makes its entrance to this ever so competitive downtown town beverage battle i mean this is volume 20 hit that like button show us some love for this series and let's go yo guys know the deal cheap chinatown is part 20 always covering all the newest spots here we're at the soft opening of a brand new pho god chain aka chicken pho and it comes from philadelphia which is to me the east coast center of chicken pho because they have the best chicken pho so we got to find out more about it but pho god bang i'm very excited let's check it out Guys, this spot alone is upping New York's pho ga game because I'm gonna be honest, listen, I think there's some decent pho and obviously there's some good Vietnamese spots out here, but there are no spots really specializing in pho ga. I've only seen it do, you know, like they got it on the menu, but you know, it's like a side thing. And if it's just a side thing, it's not gonna be great. So listen, when you got the yellow skin chicken, right? And you got the, 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 the dip for the pho ga, that's when you know it's super legit. So let me take this bite right here. I dipped it in the sauce. Shout out to Philly. They needed a Philly chicken foot spot to come to New York City, man. I welcome it. Now, the noodles are not the northern style. I, mo mostly foot guys, mostly from the north, you know, but they got the southern style noodles, but either way, it's still good. Let's try some of this beef right here. Ah. Oh my God, look at this thing. Oh, that's a monster. That's a monster, man. Oh. Why are the ribs so big, man? Yo, this guy, Tony, the owner from Philly, got spots in Vegas. This is the new neighborhood hangover spot, for sure. All right, you guys, and next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got Dada Dumpling on Doyer Street. Yo, Andrew, wake up. Yo, what? No, I'm just tired, man. I don't even know if I can finish the rest of this video if I don't get some energy, you know? Where are you getting that energy from? I don't know. I was thinking Jung Kwan Jong ginseng. It's really good for you, all natural. You know what? You can get it at Sprouts. Let's go. All right, you guys. We are at Sprouts Farmer's Market in Cliffwood, New Jersey to show you guys how we are going to power up for the rest of this video. They sell our favorite ginseng supplement, Jung Kwan Jong. Let's check it out. Two, one. All right, guys. We're at the Sprouts. Along with everything else, they've got Jang Kwan Jang Ginseng. All right, guys, 2,000 milligrams. You got your 1,000 milligrams here, and then you have your one full of deer antlers. This is for extra power, because you know, deers are very uh, healthy and athletic animals. So, hey, I'm gonna try this one. Oh man, you know I need the energy to finish this video. I'm buying all three. Listen guys, Sprouts is eco-friendly. They're in 23 states around the country. They've even got their own brand of vegan protein matcha latte. This is what I'm getting. And they also got products for beauty. They even have your very trendy hyaluronic acid. All different brands. Three different brands. Mm. And by the way, I used to go to a Sprouts Farmer's Market all the time in Los Angeles, and I stand by their products, man. They carry everything from gluten-free to non-GMO. You can almost blindfold yourself and pick up something off the shelf, and it would be good quality. As you guys may or may not know, ginseng has been used as an energy supplement in Asia for centuries, and people back then probably would never imagine where it, ginseng is at today. Hey man, let's take these because we gotta power up to finish the rest of this video. So I'm gonna be taking the full power deer antler one. By the way, guys, the deer antlers are thoroughly inspected and selectively sourced from New Zealand. Woo! Mm, I like that one. <laughs> Wow, you know, you get a little bitterness from the ginseng, but really there's also that sweetness. And I just like it, man. I, it kind of like, you kind of feel it when you drink it. 
these work. I just think it's cool that ginseng has been used all around Asia for centuries and now the modern version from Jung Kwan Jong can be found here at Sprouts Farmers Markets across the nation and also on Amazon.com. The reviews are really good. So check out the links down below or your local Sprouts Market. Woo! That was definitely worth the trip to Jersey. I'm just refocused. I feel a hype, but in a good way, not like a weird type of energy. Hey, that's all natural energy boosters on a da da dumpling. So for $15, this is what we got. We got two sets of six dumplings, okay, $5 each, because they're premium. And then we also got a cold noodle here. And these, this is the same family that ran 46 Mott. So you know, it's a lot of Chinatown tradition in this. You have chicken dumplings, AKA pot stickers, AKA guo tie, however you want to say it. And then you got the pork and chive ones. Oh my goodness, a garlic cold noodle. I don't know if I've ever even seen this dish in Chinatown. Right. With, uh, look at all that swan rung, all that garlic on top Ooh, with the crushed peanuts. Garlic looks good. Mix it up. Mix it up, David. You're in charge of that. And then they even have their very own kind of like sweet soy sauce mixture. Maybe you could say their signature dumpling sauce. Let me taste it. Ooh, kind of, kind of smoky. Got a little five spice in that. Kind of tastes like the top, like the juice for the for like the siao gai, which is the soy sauce chicken. So, all right, I'm gonna go in on this cold noodle right here. Mmm. Yeah? What flavor is that? I don't, that's, is that like a Cantonese cold noodle or like a southern style? I want to say it's almost like a hybrid between a southern and a more northern style. She asked me if I wanted it spicy, I said spicy. All right, guys, here we're trying the chicken dumpling. Chicken dumplings are all the rage. You know how it is. Mmm. Mmm. Very meaty. I like that. These are definitely handmade. Mmm. Dude, new spots are always popping up on mm. Chinatown. There's, to be fair, and some spots, they don't make it. Yeah. But some spots, they do make it, guys. Mm. Who would you bet on? All right. New spot on Doria Street. I'm not going to lie. That is one of the smallest dumpling stalls I've been in. That's almost like China size. You know what I mean? Like, you go to China and you see somebody outside of their window slinging dumplings like that. Anders, very you are kind of a cold noodle fanatic. I'm a cold noodle guy. Almost look a, looks like a Dajang man. Mm. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a new name, Andrew. I'm gonna call it the Pearl River Noodle. No, I'm telling you, between the Jung Kwan John Ginseng Deer Antler supplement that I just took, and then this, I'm hyped for the rest of this video, man. I'm super ready, man. Let's go. We got another, what, 10 spots? Next up, guys, we've got a spot that is bringing flushing to Chinatown, Manhattan. We're talking about Jingmen BBQ that says Jingmen Xiaokao. Jingmen Xiaokao. And uh, my friend here is from Tianjin. All right, guys, I'm here with Frankie, my favorite barber from 12 Pell. Frankie, thank you. Uh, you did not just cut my hair, but you usually do. Anyways, we got skewers. Can you tell us about skewers over from where you're from in your neighborhood in Brooklyn? Skewers is pretty popular where I'm from, uh, AF Brooklyn. There's some down at Flushing, but yeah, these are the staple in our hood. Guys, in Chinatown, there's really only two skewer carts now. Grand Street and this one. This is called Din Mun Shao Kao, AKA Kind of essentially means like Tianjin style skewers. Yo, know, take one. What do you want? You want a, uh, I think that's a chicken gizzard yeah. and then a chicken. Sure. I'll take no, it's chicken, chicken bones. Oh, chicken bones. Chicken bones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the chicken bones. Let's go. Two dollars each. First time having it. Mmm. Go. The quality is good. What I like is that he snipped off the super burnt ends, and you always do that when you're doing shao kao or like you know yakitori and stuff like that. All right. Mm. Yo, well, how's it compared to eight? Well, this time, this is my first time having chicken bone. It's crunchy, it's a little, little zing to it, but <laughs> I never even had chicken bone. I didn't even know they existed. It's a good way to describe it. Good, yeah. Here's the yang roll, the lamb skewer. Boom. You know what it is? We didn't ask for too much seasoning, so it really lets the meat shine. But anyways, guys, this is the newest 
skewer cart in Chinatown, New York. Flushing people have now come back to Manhattan, Chinatown, opening up carts on Division Street. Check it out. All right, you guys, we are at the brand new, just moved from Essex Street, China North Dumpling over here on Division Street. Moved from Essex and uh, yeah, listen guys, the same old favorites that you love, but in a brand new location. All right, you guys, we are at North Dumpling. Uh, this is from the owners of China North on Essex, but this is their brand new spot on Division Street. I got all this for $27 flat. This is $4 for the guotier, which are the pot stickers. Here was a bowl of new romian for $9, but I got the pie goo in there, which is this pork. I got one tons added. As you can see, you've got the beef brisket, and of course, we gotta peep the noodle underneath. And this right here is a $3.50 pork danbing, but I added egg, I added kimchi, I got all the upgrades. This ended up being $7, but I'm telling you, listen guys, you are gonna get absolutely full for two people for 27 flat, and it, you could do it way cheaper than I did. Let's check it out. Um, interestingly enough, so one of the owners is from Shenyang Dongbei, the other owner's from Fujian, that's why the Huantans, which is more of a southern dish, got the Fujian style. Mm. I'll say this. FJ dumplings, Fuzo dumplings, underrated. They do good dumplings. Beef, solid. But you see, you got pork chops in there, this pie goo. Listen guys, you know what I like about China North? It is de facto one of the cheapest spots you can go to, right? However, they got options now where you can dress it up and get a little bit more fancy if you don't want to slum it. But I see a lot of people just coming in and get this plate for $4 flat. Mmm. Wow. It's ripping with juice too. I'm telling you guys, North Dumpling is giving you a absolute deal. But last but not least, we've got the tan bing, ro bing, jia dan, jia pao cai. Um, as you can see, you got the egg in there. They grilled it, that was only a dollar. They got a whole batch of kimchi. They got a ton of pork in there. Oh my goodness. A little bit of smala, smalasauce.com or on Amazon. Yeah. If you guys know about Shenyang, Dongbei, Liaoning, there's a ton of Koreans there, a ton of Korean influence. That is why the Pao Thai kimchi is just regular. Listen guys, come to North Dumpling on Division Street. It's brand new. I'm telling you, it's dope to see it in Chinatown. It's from the LES. That location's still open, but I'm telling you, I, I, this one might be the one. All right, guys, Jung Kwon Jong has just sent us a gift, so we gotta take a quick break from filming Chinatown Cheap Eats. Listen, guys, we've got the Korean red ginseng vital tonic. I'm gonna open this up right now. Dude, they sent us the engine. Oh! Yo, that's pretty cool. Whoa. Locked and loaded, baby. All right, let's check out the Jung Kwan Jung booster engine. Oh, <laughs> I think this is cool because the engine signifies the energy and the fuel that you're gonna get from the Jung Kwan Jung ginseng. Jung Kwan Jung Korean ginseng vital tonic. Drink one of these a day. Woo! Cheers. <sighs> Woo! No, you can feel the herbs in the ginseng already. Just, woo! Yo, man, got my engine going. You know what? I'm ready to go continue Chinatown Cheap Eats. Let's finish this video. Next up, everybody, I gotta tell you about a brand new spot. It is giving you the best all-you-can-eat deal in Chinatown, period. Listen, guys, it's only $33.99 if you either want Korean barbecue or hot pot. If you want both of them, it's $38.99. We are talking about Gangnam Sushi and Bar. Let's check it out. Right here on Division Street. Let's go. Thank you. Hey, how are you guys, man? What's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Listen, guys, after you eat Korean barbecue, just head over to the Metal Grove Grade Atomized Particles. No more smell. 
Before you get any Korean barbecue or any hot pot, you can head over to the hot bar. They've got shumai, you know, pot stickers. I don't even know what this is. This is a fried brown mochi from Sichuan. Of course, we gotta pick up some fried salt and pepper shrimp and some fried balls right here, and it's all fresh. Like we said, Korean barbecue hot pot and sushi. So let's check out the rolls. Uh, you know, you can even order sashimi and stuff like that, but of course, the rolls that they got all you can eat, you know, they're gonna be the sushi rolls, but let's try them all out. Ooh, I gotta get the tempura roll. And then you gotta get the little ginger here. Ooh. Even got small Japanese appetizers here. Let me see, you got a little bit of seared tuna, or is that like, kind of like a ceviche type thing? Anyways, I'm gonna try it. All right, let me tell you how to make the best sauce here. So they got all their recommendations here, but I'm gonna show you mine. First, it starts with the onion sauce. This is gonna give you kind of your sweet vinegar, kind of like Korean barbecue shabu shabu vibe, you know? And then I'm gonna take a big heap of garlic. You know what it is. Cilantro, you know I love my scallies. Bam. You know what, I'm just gonna do more onion sauce because I love this so much. And then I'll put a dash of sesame oil and then a dash, just a dash of the chili oil here. Oh. And don't make me put some chicken powder in it too. So for the Korean barbecue, they're gonna bring the meats out, but for the hot pot, you can actually grab it yourself and this is what I think is so fun. All right, Kato, what are you grabbing right now? Sliced beef belly, and I'm gonna get a sliced beef for that. Ooh, you're more Whatever about the beef. So I kind of want some lamb though. Do they got lamb here? Oh, oh, oh. Slice lamb, baby. Young roo. Um, they have pork belly as well. Let's get one slice. Why not? Why not? Nice meats. Look how nicely they're laid out. Ooh. All right, the beef is arriving here at Gangnam. Sean, explain to us what we're looking at because it looks like some high quality stuff. All right, so first we got the Angus steak here with the butter and rosemary. Uh, next we got the hanger steak right here. Rosemary as well. Uh, this one is the outside skirt steak. Okay, so these are three different cuts of beef yeah, right here. Cuts, yep. Looking forward to that. What else we got? Right here we got the beef tongue and this is all, uh, the flank steak right here. Okay, guys, listen, if you don't know about your cuts of beef, flank, hanger, skirt, Ribeye, I'll pop up a chart. Now we're in the seafood section. What else? Hai Xian. So we got the vermicelli scallop with garlic and oil sauce. And right next to it, we got the muscle of the oil and garlic sauce. Classic Chinese recipes, guys. Coastal food. What about here? Right here, we got snow crab and abalone for you guys. Whoa. Dude, you guys have never even seen abalone at all. You can eat, look that fresh before. That's not dried out for joke, guys. That's straight out the deepest waters of Jacques Cousteau. All right, you guys, uh, the meat has arrived. Like we said, you've got hot pot, you've got sushi, you've got Korean barbecue. Nina's helping us cook. She's flipping it for you. If they're not too busy, they will provide that service for free. Guys, I gotta say, this is a crazy deal. Now, I have to admit though, the nigiri and the sashimi plate here, this is a la carte. This does not come with the all you can eat, but all this does, all this and all that, comes with the all you can eat and that's why I still consider this like such a good deal it belongs in cheap China because cheap Chinatown East because this is for what you get it's insane okay what are you eating there let me let me get this right there and just so you know it's authentic they got the radish sheets and kimchi and I think it's very fresh I'm a big fan of this kimchi as well hanger steak mmm Mm. Hey, let me get some beef tongue, radish seed, a little bit of my sweet sauce. Mm. All right, of course, we got to try the sushi. I'm going to go in for the salmon nigiri. I'm going to add a little bit of my wasabi on top, dip the back. Mmm. Chilled sushi, I love it, man. The deal here is insane. If you really think about it, Andrew, you're getting the best things, almost the premier food item from every culture. Hot pot, Korean barbecue, sushi. That's all of East Asia right there. Guys. 
This is a gem, I'm not gonna lie. It is in an unassuming location on Division Street, right next to Dime Square and all the hipster stuff that's going on that gets memed about. But I'll tell you this, this is a gem. You guys gotta come here. It's all you can eat. The beef is high quality. The veggies are right there. It's fun. You know, you can bring a whole big group. I totally recommend it. It's very friendly to everybody. Um, great servers. Anybody who comes in from out of town, I'm taking them here to Gangnam. Hey, David, I think uh, Gangnam style is back. <laughs> the vermicelli and the scallops and garlic, guys. This is one of the premier southern Chinese Cantonese seafood dishes that you can get, and they got it here. All right, finally, I cannot leave without eating this scallop with vermicelli. It's starting to bubble. Man, I will tell you this. I've already told a few friends about this spot, and they've came back three times already. Actually, we have a friend, shout out Tone. This is his favorite spot in Manhattan. I'm talking about across mm. all categories. All right, this is not just a great day. This is not just a great deal for Chinatown. This is a great deal for Manhattan, period. Guys, so definitely check out Gangnam barbecue, hot pot, sushi, all you can eat, $33.99. Hard deal to beat, guys. I'm glad that we can tell a lot of people about this. Scallops and fun si. Are we in China right now? Maybe Guangzhou. See you here on in the next spot. This is one of my favorite dishes that represents Guangzhou because it's scallops, you got vermicelli, you have some oil, you have a lot of garlic, and I'm gonna top it off with smala. Uh, guys, I'll this tell you is, this. this is one of the most famous coastal seafood dishes in oh. China now. Yeah, and I will say this. Listen, I've already told a few friends about this spot, David, and our friend Tone has already been here three times, and he says that this is his favorite spot in all of New York City. So it's not just a good deal for Chinatown. Across uh, categories. This is a great deal for Manhattan, so you got to check it out. Wow, the price is $33.99. Insane. And you get the beef, and you get the seafood, whatever you like, inland, coastal. Mmm. I'll be here. Maybe I'll see you here. On to the next spot. All right, so our next spot on Cheap Chinatown Eats is K Kimbap. It's one of the newest stalls in the Mont Street Eatery. And you know, some of these stalls have switched in and out, but this one is new, and I think this one will stick around. They're selling Kimbap. They got the Daboki sticks. They have all different types of things, some homemade kimchi dishes, and it's started by this lovely couple. All right, so I'm gonna get the spicy pork Kimbap. And one very, very spicy. spicy How do you say? Dakochi. Dakochi. Yes. Do you see that? The freshy making for you. Perilla leaf, fresh kimbap made with perilla leaf and spicy pork. And the kimbap slicer. This one is a dokochi, the very spicy one. This one is a, is a pork barbecue kimbap. But you nervous. You're going to get the nervous and the broken one. Sorry about it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Bye. Okay, enjoy. All right, I got my authentic pork. Uh, spicy pork uh, kimbap with a perilla leaf inside. It looks amazing. I'm ready to try it. And then I got my spicy uh, skewer right here. I forgot the name for it, but she said it's gonna make me cry. So if I eat that and I don't cry, I'm gonna go tell. Let's go. $11. Not bad for how big it is, to be honest. Listen, there's a lot of food here. Like that, the Korean street snacks, Korean corn dogs, kimbap. The kimbap. So far, so good. But let's try this out. This was $5. A little sausages, a little bit of the rice cake right here. She said it was very spicy. Very spicy. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. More sweet than spicy. Got a kick. Mmm. Chewy, crispy. Sausage there is meaty too. This is good, man. If you guys want some Korean snacks, you gotta come to K Kimbap. But real quick, follow me. Hey. That's really good. But I'm not crying. 
It's spicy, but not, it didn't make me cry spicy. It's good though. Yeah. All right, here I'm looking at this very high quality, complex, authentic kimbap, spicy pork, eight different components in there, little seeds on top. She, she's a craftsman back there, all right? Mmm. Mmm. Hey, is Korean stuff killing it right now? Bro. I like the explosion of all these Korean street snacks, you know, out here. You even have Korean barbecues popping up around Chinatown area. So, honestly, this was a great addition. Check out K Kimbap in the Mont Street Eatery. All right, guys, another spot here at Mott Street Eater is Sammy Wago. Now, we've showed you their quartier before, AKA their pan fried dumplings or the pot stickers, right? But they got Nero Man, AKA Taiwanese beef noodle soup. And you can smell it, man. I'll tell you this about Taiwanese beef noodle soup. In my opinion, the ones that I had in Taiwan, this does remind me of that because it's like slightly medicinal, but also very savory, beefy, lots of different veggies in there. Let's take a look. Listen, come on, she put the scallions freshly on top. Oh, and you got the swan tai, you got the little sour cabbage, you got the two different types of sour cabbage. Oh my gosh, and the noodles, look at that. Mm, and carrots, and taste it. Taste this beef first. It just goes to show you a spot that's known for good dumplings can also be known for good Nero man too. Mmm, sweet, beefy, a little medicinal. That's the Taiwanese beef noodle soup that I know. But there obviously are all different types of beef noodle soups from different regions. For $13.50. Yeah, you saw it the Google CK? What is the, from the white wood for oh. body? Oh, yeah, okay. Healthy, healthy drink. Uh, it's a healthy drink. She makes it here. It's called CK. She makes it herself. It's healthy, tasty. Let's get it. Yo, this is good. Koreans do a great job. Kind of like the grainy drinks, kind of like a barley tea too. This is good. You should get Shike. If you guys haven't had it, check it out. I hope it does heal all my illnesses. Next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got Siyi. This is a tea and incense shop. I'm telling you. But tell us about Si Yi and what we should get because we're gonna get one drink for Chinatown Cheap Eats, but I want to get something special. Okay. Well, so, what do you like? Milk or for tea? I, I'm looking at this avocado in your coat. Okay. Is there avocado in that? Yes, it's a real avocado. Let me get that. Cheese fall. Si Yi. Okay. All right, you guys, we are at the temple theme Si Yi tea. It's designed to be relaxing. You are looking at a coconut milk tea, and this is a oat bamboo tea. You got, of course, the bamboo straws right here for extra tea flavor. And then, of course, we got the coconut milk lime. Kai, this is the one, bro. 10 out of 10 on coconut milk. As Su Yi does, very relaxing atmosphere. Check it out. All right, guys, our next spot is on Bayard Street. It is brand new, just opened. It's a dessert chain from Hong Kong called Le Momo. And it's really popular over there, but they're using all real fruit, super high quality. It's just a soft opening right now, but by the time you watch this video, it'll probably be wide open. So definitely check it out. Let's go try some. Okay, so right away, I'm looking at the menu right now. It looks very nice. Graphics are A+. Plus, okay, you have the one P lemon tea. Okay, I guess those are crushed. Maybe preserved lemon. No, I don't know. This is the lime that they gave me. And this is the... Hey, this, hey, wow. Hey, like skin. Wow. It looks just like the picture. Wow. Super all natural. Lemon tea and sugar. That's all they have. Okay, the best sugar. The best lemon and fruit. The best water. The best tea. All right, we got our drinks here at Ling Momo. That's how you say it more in the Cantonese accent. Guys, the aesthetics are crazy. The graphics are on point. I mean, you got blue everywhere. They got three different types of straws, okay, for boba, for uh, I think without milk tea, and then this is for milk tea. So let's just check it out, man. I got the Yashi Oolong milk tea. I got the coconut lemon tea, and then the signature handcrafted oh, shit. Kung Fu lemon tea. Let's go. 
Taste the freshness. That guys, this is the freshest Hong Kong iced lemon tea or Dong Ling Sha that I've I've ever had. That squeezed right into it. In fact, I can actually taste. I want to say a slight bitterness from like the skin and 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 the juices that came from it raw. But I really like it because it, it basically feels like someone just did it straight for you on the street. Mm. Oh my gosh. That's a winner. That's a winner, man. I'm definitely coming back for that one. Cause you know what it is? A lot of Dongling Chows out there, they're just sweet. That's all they are, you know? But this one has the freshness. So this is the coconut, coconut lemon tea. A little bit milky, as you can see. Oh, oh, I got the slice of lemon in there. There's real fruit that came out of my mouth. Yo, this is actually kind of crazy. It's like taking time to process, but it's like smooth and creamy, coconutty and still lemony. I don't think I've ever had a drink like that. It's almost like one of those coconut cans that you get at Hot Pot, except with a bunch of like lemonade. I don't know guys, this, this, is, this is kind of a hit too. That was, wow, a milky lemonade. That's a coconut milky lemonade right there. And then finally, you got the oolong. Very milky, made with real fresh ingredients. Mm, I feel I could taste that roasted oolongness. Last but not least, I got the Yashi Oolong Lemon Tea. Plenty of tea, ice flowing at the top, top half, I like that. Mm. Dude, I can taste the lemon. What kind of lemon is that? What's the name of it? Is it Peff and Lemon? Oh, you guys, if you guys are looking for a real fruit lemon tea, this is it. Like, you got it. You can taste it. Like, the little bit of the juiciness, the citrusy, the skin even a little bit. And the tea is really good. It's ice cold, perfect for the summer. You know, between Ling Momo and Lang Ki down the street, it's really good to see the Hong Kong chains coming back to Chinatown, you know? I, you know, I like all the other chains, but the Hong Kong ones, good. All right, you guys, we got to check out Sugar Box. This is a brand new spot in Chinatown. They got some really inventive desserts. They got pandan noodles, sago, some stuff that is just like a lot more rare to find. They've got chicken wings, popcorn chicken as well. Let's talk to the owner. What's going on, man? Okay. What's your name? Alan. Alan, tell us about your spot. Brand new to Chinatown, Sugar Box. Yeah, so uh, we had a shop which opened three months ago. So we have uh, bubble teas, we have dessert, and uh, we have dessert. We have snack uh, for the puddings. So this is our mango pomelo, our number one selling. Uh, great flush, 10,000 pandan, this is our popcorn chicken. Okay, real quick, I think that these are the two that really stand out to me because this is contained in a coconut. Yeah. It looks like the photo, amazing if you want to just have an experience. And the teller, talk to us about the pandan jelly noodles because I've never even seen this before. Yeah, so we saw pandan to make a kind of like noodle, but actually not noodle, it's kind of pudding, pudding texture. And also a pandan uh, as well. At the bottom, we have a uh, sago, penguin jelly on the bottom. Mm. Yeah, what's the chance to pop in boba? I'm just going for it. Listen guys, they got bing fun on the bottom, they got sago, they got the little panda cookies. You can mix the coconut milk with it. You can mix the coconut milk with it. Yeah. Pour it for me, please, yeah, please, please. Yeah. Tastes a lot better with the, with the coconut. Whoa! Coconut Listen, guys, milk. I don't think that Chinatown, New York has ever seen any dessert shop quite like this. Sugar Box, man. All right, you guys, like we said, we're at Sugar Box, brand new popcorn chicken taste test. Dolly. David, you carrying a lot right now. You got popcorn chicken and the watermelon. Oh, look at that. I got the silver little sagos, little frog egg joints with the tofu fa or the coconut jelly. Watermelon, mango. Come to Sugar Box. Just come, just come, just come. Say what's up to Alan. Hey, what's up? You. you got the pandan jelly noodle. Whoa. That's, you got the pandan marshmallow. Oh, that is so cute. 
Hello, welcome to the Hong Kong Jockey Club. No, the Nomad Jockey oh, Club. Oh, Nomad Jockey Club. Here we have the fish fillet. And this is actually something that you would find in Hong Kong, but more at a very Western spot. This is not obviously a traditional Chinese dish, but oh my gosh, let's break that fish but, open. Andrew, it is a traditional British dish though. It is a traditional Hong Kong dish. Let, let me get that right, sorry. Uh, look at this, they even uh, cut up the lemons, I like that. We squeeze a little lemon. Oh, Andrew, it's nice to have people hold over some things from the colonies. Oh man, I feel like I'm a uh, Hong Kong aristocrat. Let's check it out. Here at Nomad Tea Parlor. Oh wow. Wow. Oh, I do say, the Hong Kong may have perfected the fish and chips, David. Wow, the fries are good. I'm a fries guy. I know my fries. And you know we could not leave this spot without getting the scallion chicken. Guys, if there are scallions on the menu, I'm getting it. And they gave you all the green So parts. you're saying this is not gong chong gai, this is just chong gai? I think it's just chong gai, but man, they give you all the green chongs. Like none of the white parts, you know? Which is, uh, let me just get a bunch of, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at this bite. And you know what I like about it for the tea bar lander? They took the bones out. Mo what? Whoa. No. That reminded me of Hong Kong. I think that's one of my favorite dishes here. Wow. Wow. So simple. Salty, sweet, scallion-y. The chicken is kind of like a siao guy, kind of like a soy sauce chicken. Oh. Plus, Bonus? you'll hit your macros too. Hey, listen guys, check out Nomad Tea Parlor. We'll pop up a link right here. I'm telling you, if your family's Cantonese, you spend time in Hong Kong, Singapore, Shanghai, you need to come check this out. All right, you guys, we are at the newest Hong Kong spot in New York City. It's called Nomad Tea Parlor. We're in an area that has very little Chinese food. We're actually in Nomad. Yeah, and I know this isn't a Chinatown cheapie, but I would call this future retro Hong Kong Chinatown. I mean, like some version of that, because basically it's, the decor is heavily based off Hong Kong in the 1940s, 1960s, and you got all these different types of dishes, David. You got spicy soft shell crab. We got you know what I mean, XO churn fun right here. Kind of like a girl chong oh hall, beef chow fun. You have dan dan noodles. You got these fresh chili shrimp wontons. And then you got chicken truffle si long bao, AKA xiao long bao. Dave, what are you going for first? I got to start off with the soft shell crab. And uh, I got to say like, when you're in Nomad Tea Parlor, it reminds you more of spots you've seen in Hong Kong, Singapore, Sydney, Toronto, more than anywhere I've been in America. I gotta dip my soup dumpling in some vinegar. Let it bathe, let it bathe. Let it cool. Oh, go ahead. Get a toast bottle. Mmm. What is this? Uh, that was our cloud connected. Uh, so it was inspired by Hong Kong milk tea. Look, the viewers have kind of taken a, another journey, but uh, some kung spice, uh, cognac, a little bit of garden rum, some dry whiskey, and uh, top of the cup. Listen guys, Greg is also here with a crazy cocktail program. I'm telling you, this is a Lai Ta cocktail meant to mimic Hong Kong milk tea. Dave, you gotta try it now. I know it's a little early to drink. The Dude, foam on top tastes like Lai Ta. This chicken truffle soup dumpling, crazy. Mm. All right, you guys, we're gonna get into the uh, spicy one tons here, the Hong Yo Chao So. Mm. And of course, any Kanto spot has got to have churn fun and usually cook in XO sauce. Mm. If you guys don't know about XO sauce, it's actually a mixture of different seafood ingredients with some saute. I just think it's cool, man. I feel like I'm seeing like remnants or like it almost feels like there's some version of like a Uncle Lou's, some of that Chinatown-ness, but it's just taken on a whole nother level up here in Nomad, so go for it. Don Don noodles. Listen guys, they got all the big hitters. And I think one thing about like their whole like thing about food is like they don't skimp out even though they got crazy cocktails too. They are not going easy on the food. They're going hard on the food. Just it with a little Sichuan flavor. That's good. That's so good. My favorite thing so far. Wow. 
Huh? Oh, who is this? Oh. Who is this? How's it going? You've seen his face, but what do you think about Nomad Tomorrow? It looks great. Look inside, very vintage. Um, I actually don't know what that means, but. <laughs> All right, you guys, round two here at Nomad Tea Parlor, guys. I'm telling you, there is nothing like this in North America right now. They've got Nuro Jimbing, which is a, uh, you know, Shandong beef wrap, but it's, of course, it's been, you know, this is like the Americanized version. You know what I noticed, Andrew? It's extra flaky. Oh, no, no, it is crispy. And I, I just see all the crumbs falling off. That's what I like to see, the, the amount of flakiness. And when it comes to beef noodle soup, AKA Nuro Jimbing, this is their grandmother's beef stew made for over eight hours. You can see a little bit of chili peppers in there, but look, you can just cut the beef with your chopsticks like we said it's kind of interesting because the menu is like pan abc right you know what i mean because it's it, it's hk but you got the you know new roll men and new roll gym right so let's check but, it that, out. but that's why i think it's very related to like chinatown like a lot of what you can get in chinatown whether it's dim sum soup dumplings or a lot of abc dishes that's it right here let me try yo that broth is super rich this is one of the most pastry-like phyllo crust style neuro jembings. Actually, the most that I ever had in my life. I gotta dip it in. You, you soup lovers are gonna like this one. Just even just the soup alone is great. Wow. One. Aren't you guys like we said they had a crazy cocktail program as well? This is the pineapple cake. This is like uh, their version of a Midori sour. And you know what the crazy thing is? They actually made this with baijiu but they hit it very well. So you still get the floral high notes of the baiju, but without any of that almost like acidic acetone downside. David, this tastes like a green Jolly Rancher and I like it that way. I'm a big fan of candy cocktails, man. All right, let's just take a look at this, man. You've got this crispy beef, guys. This is a Chinese American classic, but it's also like slightly based off of a real Hunan dish too. Mm, fried beef. Mmm. It's cool, it's got this crunch, but all those, also this candy-like chew. We're about to eat the pepper. Oh my gosh, eating the pepper. And David, one of the most famous Cantonese dishes out there is the steamed shrimp on funzi, like vermicelli. I know that there's a Chinese name for this that I'm probably forgetting uh, right now. I'm blinking, but basically this dish is one of the most fire Cantonese dishes you can get. And you know, this dish uh, got popular in Guangdong and it sort of made its way around coastal China to the point where you can even get this dish in like Shandong nowadays. Yeah. I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. The little tail's gonna give it a crunch. Tons of garlic, I like that. Listen guys, when I hear something referred to as a tea parlor, I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's like a high-end dim sum spot but going back to its Kanto roots, you got a bozai fan here. Listen, guys, you got op, which is duck. You've got the lap yuk right here, which is a little bit different than lap churn. This is lap churn right here. We gonna mix it all up right here. They already got the sweet xiao, which is soy sauce, but they got the quail eggs too. Hold up, it's not a dinosaur egg. It's not a baby brontosaurus egg. Throw some smala on there. Mm. Listen guys, these pots are not easy to clean. For a tea parlor with A1 drinks to do this for you is special. All right, everybody, I'm here at the brand new Din Tai Fung in New York City. Brand new, this is a soft opening, and you know, I know this is not a Chinatown cheapie, but I just gotta try the Shaolong Bao because these are supposed to be, you know, the world famous Shaolong Bao here. So they might be the best Shaolong Bao in New York City. Let me check this out. They're making them right behind you in the little uh, soup dumpling den over there. I'm gonna dip it here. They're very small, delicate, smaller than like Joe Shanghai and stuff like that. Let me just bite it open. Just like the Taipei one, man. It's pretty good. It's 
so really good. Did talk fun, man. You guys come by. Uh, there's probably gonna be a wait. And you know, this, this is not the cheapest Shalom Bao that you can get. Definitely you can get a better deal, but these are still elite. All right, guys, just to tell you about the quality here at Din Dai Fung, and I'm not getting paid to say this, I'm just saying literally because the quality is so good. They came by and told us that they're gonna replace this dumpling because it's not made correctly. You see how it's leaning a little bit downward and it looks a little bit like sloppy? They're gonna come back and steam up one whole dumpling and give it to us. So I'm just saying, that's the quality you're dealing with. Anyways, I gotta try the chicken shao long bao that are hot, oh my gosh. And you know, the thing about Din Tai Fung skin, super thin and it won't break. That's the key. And a little ginger. Hey, for the price, you better get some elite dumplings. It's good though, wow. And of course, I could not try the Din Tai Fung Shalom Bao without trying it with Sma La. And I'm just gonna drip it at the top and then you can see it run down the little pleats of the dumpling. Ow, oh, ow. Oh. Just like that. A little dab of vinegar. Woo. Sma La sauce, get it on Amazon. All right, so our next spot is on Mod Street, and it could be, maybe, it might be the next big dessert hit in Chinatown, guys. I'm talking about Icy Melon. It's serving everything from waffle ice cream sandwiches to signature waffles. You got banana splits, mango crepe cakes. You got slushies inside of watermelons, even though they might have ran out of that for now, but let's check it out. All right, we're inside of Icy Melon, and here we got our first items. Here we have the Dorayaki. This is a Japanese-style pancake sandwiches. Oftentimes, they're smaller, but this one's a little bit bigger, and we got uh, Nutella, cream, and fresh strawberries cut into it. That looks delicious, actually. And then you have a waffle sandwich. This is more based off the Belgian waffle with melon ice cream and cream right there, guys. Let's cut it up. Just like I would a nice burger. Mm. You guys ready to see me eat this like a big Whopper? I'm about to go in. Let's do it. Ooh, this is a, it's a very thick waffle. Mm. So, it was $19 for both of these. The Doryaki is about $5.50. That's kind of good. Mmm. A little tough to eat, ergonomically speaking, but that was tasty, that was good, that was good. All right, going on to this Dorayaki. This is probably the cutest of the desserts. Let me cut this in half. Ah. Mmm. I'm going for the Doriaki. The Doriaki, guys. Icy Melon, brand new, just opened up. It's a big space. I could see a lot of like younger people, especially coming here to hang out. They got a variety of desserts. Look forward to seeing what happens next. All right, everybody, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and hit that like button. And if you really like videos like this, feel free to leave a super thanks. We really appreciate it. And I know that we don't upload as much food tour content on our channel as of lately. It's gone through some changes, but we really enjoy what we're doing. Checking out new spots and supporting entrepreneurs in Chinatown will always be something we do. But it does feel like that when we're on Hot Pot Boys, we're really unpacking and discussing hard topics. So if these types of videos get too deep or sometimes too political, then obviously feel free to skip them, feel no pressure. But if you're looking to watch us help navigate these many like, I guess semi-political or like, I guess mysteries or I guess taboo topics of being Asian, Please check them out. I think we're doing good work. And also check out Smala Sauce, our chili oil. It's also very delicious. 
no cap. I mean, check out the Instagram. You can see all the content and all our friends and even our non-friends, even strangers love it, obviously. Also, check it out on Amazon.com. It has good ratings. So, uh, until next time, thank you very much. We out. Peace.